Now, fish farming has become one of the most lucrative businesses in Uganda thanks to the availability of market, but also the fact that not very many people are doing it. And government has restricted majority of people from fishing in the lakes because they are depleting fish. Today we moved about 300 kilometers in the eastern part of the country that is Tororo to be precise and we visited a farmer her name is Martha and her farm name is Zoe Farms and Fisheries. Today we're going to talk about fish farming. If you're new here please ensure that you subscribe. Don't forget to support us at so house bukoto we have a beautiful restaurant and we sell beautiful foods please reach us out on those numbers and we shall be more than glad to serve you so why not let's talk to an expert in fish farming stick around welcome daktari yes thank you how are you doing today i'm okay how are you are you feeling the heat like i am yeah it is too hot how are you doctor i'm okay first of all say hello to our viewers and introduce yourself yes i'm glad to see you on this farm this is a zero farm located in Kaliro, in Kamuri, Jorowendo. I'm here as a vet, as the well, the person, technical person in the fish farming. As we see here, fish farming became part of us. On Jorowendo here, many people have been discouraging this project. But they have come to know that fish farming is like the way you do other things now a lot of people have been asking me dennis i want to start fish farming where do we start fish farming from fish farming is a simple project or a simple enterprise so long as you are located where there is water when you have water supply there and then you are able to start fish farming However much other people do fish farming in the cages, others they use those polythene technology. But a fish which comes from the water source of underground, it has an added values on the minerals. So whoever wants to start fish farming, the first element to look at is the water source. What you go on next is to look at your site where you are going to site the fish ponds. Don't put the fish pond in a ground where your water source cannot fill them. Tunnel, channel the fish ponds in the direction of the flow of water. So, when you dig your fish pond, make sure that no any other fish pond which serves another fish pond. Let the water source point serves each and every point at a different end up. You, you don't do like um, the, the, from the source mm. to a pond, then from the pond to another pond. Yes, the water should be independent, however much they are coming from the main server. So how many um, ponds do you have in this uh, farm? Here are the major ponds we are having, six of them. Others, they were just starting as demos. But the major one, we have six, which we have guaranteed on. Okay, so which type of fish do you raise here? Here we are raising catfish. We are raising tilapias. Because the demand for them is like a hot cake. And now when you catch it at the time interval, which they take for them to mature, is like a growing maize. So now I have identified a space where there is water. I have dug my, you know, my fish pond. Where do I source the fish from? Do I need to go to Lake Victoria and capture those young fish? No. In Uganda, we have various fish breeders, so you can contact them and they give, you get the fingerlies. Those younger fish, we always call them the fingerlies. So those fingerlies, we bring them, we put in our, water, our ponds, then we start the, water, the feeding okay. of these fingerlies. Are there breeding points in Uganda? Are there as many? 
Yeah. In the country across, located across the country? Yes. Even in Panao, there's a narrow enterprises, government enterprises. They are breeding fish and they are calling farmers mm. to get these fish. Under those operations is where is the creation? But some farmers don't trust anything to come f that comes from Naro. Because we've, a lot of farmers, again, I wanted to clear this out because a lot of farmers think, oh, things are produced by Naro, sometimes are substandard, sometimes are GMO related. No. People bring in the politics. Okay. But in the production, when you go with the politics, mm. there you have a quality assurance mm. and the documentation from where you are picking the fish. Those breeder, as other breeder centers, mm. you may land on them and you ask the documentation and the generation when they don't have. But when I know that I picked this from Naro, I picked this from Nagri, there I have to follow up. Why is it not performing? Mm. Yes. So why haven't you guys uh, decided to have your breeding center here? Is it something very technical? Is it, does it require a lot of money? Why? It is not a technical, but the genetical makeup of this fish keeps on changing. Now, for you, you may need the production of those fingers at a uniform stage when your incubators are down. Because they have the incubator state where we incubate them. But the other guys, they have the resources which are at stand still whereby each and everything they can do it in a time at the required intervals. So I've set up my ponds, I've brought my fish. What is the next step to do? Fish are like a chicken. When you bring a chick from day one, you have to take the measures to know how many, how many I've put in the pond, how many are alive and how many were dead. Don't put in the pond a, a, a kafingering which has died. Make sure that what you have put in the pond is a live one. And from there, as you bring the chicks and they start eating, the same the fish will start eating. Because the water source from there will have some nutrients which it starts on then from there we will introduce the feeds which you, we do always give. Somebody is asking, what type of feed do you give to the fish? Fish have their specific periods and the different companies are making a different type of food. So when you go to the market, even if a layman just reach and say, I want that because all of fish feeds they have labels that these are fish what feeds with the photos of the what of the fish. Any company can make it, but they do not fail to put the the, what, the label. Um, isn't there like uh, for growers, you know, winners, and then mature fish like the type of food, or oh, it's the same food that they all feed on? We always get a variety. The finger is where they are starting. Their feeds is a bit of higher protein content. And then when they have reached some stage in the middle, like a four month, six months, there you can even use feeds which has a bit reduced in the protein content. But the number of kilo in consumption keeps on increasing, depending on the size. The one which is young can eat small grams. Now the one which is big also increases in the number of feeds per, per, per fish. Does the pond size matter and which size of pond do you recommend somebody to start with or to dig? For a person who is just starting, I would regard that person to start a 12 by 15. And there it will be Deep, we always regard three feet. Such that that pond is able to help the people who are going to fish out of it. The more deep it is, the more difficult it is to, to fish. 
let's talk about uh, pond maintenance how do we maintain our ponds do we just let them let the fish enjoy the space until when they are harvested or is there something we do to maintain the ponds and if so how do we do it the problem we always face with ponds is the salt as i told you in the beginning that don't make your ponds to be in a, a slant space more because the water running, the, 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 when the rain comes, the water running will wash away the water, the soil, and then they will cover the water, the pond. Here, what we do to maintain the ponds, make sure that you plant green pasture around the ponds. Even if it rains, no silt moves to the water, to the pond. And make sure that your ponds, their ends are dark, uh, sharp corners. There, those ones cannot allow easy slanting and it, it will be easily protected. But never miss to leave the pond's banks open. Let them be covered green. Their pond maintenance will be easy. Even when after fishing, make sure that if there is still to remove all those dead snails which you are in, remove and allow a pond to rest either for one or two months. That's when you do it. Uh, isn't that too much of time? Why is it so? Why is it important? It's to not leave too much time mm. because remember, as the other fish are in. There is a contamination, and in that contamination, this pond is ever filled with feeds and other intruders which are coming in. So there is what we call water toxicity. So when you allow this, when you, after harvesting the fish and you remove that water, then you allow the fresh water to come. It is like you are fertilizing the pond to develop as a required microorganism which have been destroyed. Okay. Yes. Wow, interesting. Uh, how do you maintain uh, the ponds from having water that comes from outside, apart from the, uh, the, the grass that you talked about? Tunnel out to the water which comes from outside to make sure that there is no any entry like running water yes you... that running water turn it out ah i understand water has different temperatures yes and the temperatures do affect the fish they do affect and at the same time the contamination of that water water from outside when you leave it direct to go to your ponds it has a lot of chemicals of which most of the chemicals are toxic to the water to the fish you, we talked about the feeding, but we didn't expand much. How many times do we feed fish? Three times. In a day. In a day. Isn't that too much? Not too much. Remember. So, so let's, 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 let's assume you, you talked about 12 by 15, is it? Yes. Uh, feet, yes. a pond. Yes. How many fish can go into that pond? Into that pond, mm. we put in around 3,000 to 4,000 water. Fish, fingerlings. fingerlings. Those ones can be able to be in such a pond. And from your experience, yes. how many survive that first stage? Do when, they can they all grow? When or? properly managed, mm. your mortality rate is zero. Can, let me say that it can be even two percent. Ah, uh, then that means they, they grow mostly. Yes, all, all of them. And then the other question would be in that same space of 15 by 12 feet pond, yes. and you've put 4,000 fish, how many cages of feeds do they eat in a day? In a day, in a day when we are feeding three times, make sure that when you have put 4,000, there you are going to 12 kilograms during the first months. You are going to what? To 12 kilograms. Remember, that pond, every time you are coming in the morning, you give, will give like 3 kilograms, midday, the same, and then evening. 
the reason why we always maintain that is now that the feeding of this fish after it has swallowed it takes with water so the metabolic rate is high that's why we make sure that the feeding interval is of three times does it really make business sense yeah it makes business sense or i will end up spending a lot of uh, money in the feeds are there, aren't there any other um, substitutes i can use instead of buying feeds from the market other substitutes are there mm. but the issue is the adulteration of the feeds when i talk about adulteration mm. you may say that you are mixing your what your feeds yourself mm. But when you are using maize, which is having aflatoxin, so that aflatoxin, when it accumulates, it will kill the fish. Even at times, we lack at the, the, the we lack what we call accurate measurement machine, where they are telling you that it is three point zero four milligrams or grams. For you, you will measure three point eight. So when it exceeds, it, one ingredient when it exceeds in the feeds, it affects your, the growth of the, these fish. That's why we say, we all, if you are to go in if making your feeds, make sure that you have the proper calculation. Okay. Yeah. The other thing you were talking about, that, that feeding is expensive, otherwise, when you compare the feeding of the chicken and the fish, it is similar. And when you manage it well, quick return. Fish is not only a, a long term species that you are going to keep it for years. Proper feeding, seven months on the market. Now, a fish of one kg, 1.5. When I'm selling it at 18, 15. Time was the, 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 the number of I'm having. Mm. Eh? That's a good money. Yeah, when I deduct on the feeds, I remain with money. Yeah. Wow. I think farmers out there, you should uh, really, really embrace this. Now, another thing I forgot to tell you in the beginning is that Zoe Farms is on YouTube. Guys, go and subscribe to their YouTube channel. As you can see, Zoe Farms and... Uh, Fisheries, exactly. That is the, the on the screen as you're seeing it. That is their YouTube channel. Go there. They have really nice content. Please subscribe, subscribe. I highly recommend you subscribe because they're going to give you even much more than uh, what I'm giving you right about now. So let's talk about challenges. Are there challenges in fish farming? And if so, what are those specifics? Because I know every farm has their own challenges. What are those that you've faced here at Zoe Farms? Fish farming has a lot of challenges as you first stated the one that one of your colleagues the fish was washed away by the rain the running water here at zoe at first we had with a challenge which affected us when we had not installed those cameras the outsiders the outsiders could stand outside then they throw the what the poison in the pond you saw you land on other fish when they are dead others are alive so that one was challenging us but we have gone ahead to install now the what the camera next to that another challenge at first which we had before gazette was that this place, the outsiders were coming to fish at night. <laughs> they say, hey, they steal that fish at night. For you count that in the pond I'm having 3,000, when you're having 2,000. By the time of selling, you run mad. <laughs> so, that challenge is there. That's why you say, whenever you make a fish pond, Make sure that it is enclosed. Enclosed uh, within a fence. You've yes. fenced it off. Enclosed within the fence mm. and it has a gate. Mm. Only those people allowed to enter there. They are the only people.
to enter. Those which are not allowed, let them remain outside. So, so far, we have not uh, more so landed on, on, on those diseases because now these uh, of our ponds were what we call Vagini ponds, starting up ponds. If it was uh, most of the ponds which have grown old, they force those uh, challenges, the red patches on the fish. But that one comes after a certain period, but it can be managed. When you see such incidents appearing in your farm, make sure that after your harvest, you sterilize that pond. What, is, what do you mean by sterilizing? Sterilizing? Leaving it, like it for a, a month or so? No, when you are leaving it for the mass, mm. first you put agriculture lime in that water. In that in, pond. In that pond mm. to cut out neutralization. It might be due, due to pH. Now, when the pH heightens, it affects them. Other fish want to, to work in an alkaline solution, but the solution might be going acidic. So, the agricultural lime will neutralize. Now, these are the intruders. When you have harvested and you have put in water, Make sure that you pour some molas to kill those snails which might be entering the water and their eggs. That one will keep your ponds smart and get rid of such scenarios. Because as I was telling you, that fish farming is one of the enterprises which are making Ugandans to be rich. Whoever has land, I'm advocating them. If it runs up to the water source, make sure that you utilize that water before you grow old. When you don't have it, make sure that you find a way of getting where you can dig a pond. Because somebody who is going to grow 30 acres of maize, for me I will concentrate on my one pond, 12 by 15. I will drive when you are still seated. As telling me that this time my grew maize, eh, maize went down to 400. Fish will not go down. Because now the demand, you know it. <laughs> you know when for us who are here, when they say that Mukene is restricted from the other side, now with the fish farmers of the catfish, there we kill up. Every person will come this way. Uh, let's talk about um, 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 the, the money, the amount of money somebody is required or to have to start. How much can somebody start with? Say for example, if they are starting with one pond. When you are starting with one pond, this pond which I've talked about, just five million can make you to be started. Okay, that includes uh, digging, digging it, mm, creating a water source, yes, and then um, putting fish yes. and buying feeds, yes, for the eight months or for the startup. Let me say that now you see mm. <laughs> when you sit down and you give the calculation to the to the farmer that uh, you correct your 10 million when he doesn't know where he's going, mm. it is hard. For us, we have a slogan at Zero Farm. Mm. Start where people are, with what they have, help them to help themselves. Mm. Here we are. When you start that pond, and you have started now seeing your fish are playing, they are eating, because that startup can make you to start with the two months. Mm. Now, will you leave them to die? <laughs> yes. That means that you have started knowing where you are going. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, again, I, I forgot to ask, um, at what stage do the other fingerlings come in? Are they at one month, uh, one week? Fingerlings, we always receive them, those ones at three weeks to one month. So when you bring them, you take them directly? Direct to the water. You know, when they reach here, the other side they are in a confined place. Now when they have reached here, they will also celebrate and say we have got our independence. Okay, out of captivity. <laughs> uh, is there a market? 
for fish apart from of course i know when i go to the markets the normal markets i maybe in kampala i go to nakawa nakasero or kalere i'll get a market uh, for fish but you're in tororo i mean miles and miles away from the capital city kampala is there a market for fish fish is like a gold you just wake up and announce that, that i'm harvesting fish mm. you will not see who is communicating to the other because last time when we were harvesting here mm. buyers were coming from Utaleja, but we did not call them but they came asking we heard mm. that you people you are harvesting fish mm. in total here what you forget is to buy if you want a lady, a lady to live you are and you become a bachelor forget about buying fish because it is one of the sources at home okay. yes a farmer can, a, a woman can go and dig in all of hardship but when she tastes fish she's comfortable she relaxes. <laughs> that's the struggle here many have at least every evening he goes and get that catfish at least of 80,000, 12,000, 15, mm. to make the family happy. Okay. Yeah. Do, there, there are incidents where I've seen um, birds come and pick fish. Yeah. Have you had that? And if so, how are you managing? That uh, scenario here, we have not got that challenge mm. because most of those birds are, are affected by people who are near the lake showers. But in a far range like this, we do not face such challenges. But when it comes, we put a net on top, so that it cannot do what enter in and it, yes. Okay. But as our farm, we have not faced such a challenge because... So how many workers uh, do you have here that attend to the ponds? Here. Do you need, do you need workers anyway? No. Or you need somebody that I can have, feed them? Yeah, one person feeds these ponds. Oh, yeah. Th then that is cost effective. Yes. Can I use my land afterwards in case I'm done with fishing? Can yeah. that land, because I've seen now you've dug, you know, ponds everywhere, the land is looking. But, but the soil is not going far. The soil is on the bank and it is impacted. But when you have gone into fish farming, my dear, even if you like you what or oh what, nobody will accept you to close the pond. <laughs> and, and do you dig the ponds using your hands or you bring a tractor? Yeah, these are handy, driven go on the ponds. Okay. Yes. There are incidents where people have said that uh, rabbit droppings are very healthy for fish and chicken droppings. Have you tried it here? They are very good. For the for, for 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 the for the fish feedings, but uh, the rabbit the rabbit the, the rabbit droppings, as you you say, when you feed them to the to the fish, they have a higher concentration of uric acid. So there is a way it affects the some digestion of the water of the fish, but the chicken droppings. That one is perfect. Yes. Can it substitute the normal food that we buy, the, the, the pellets? It can substitute, but you cannot say that you are permanently depending on it. Because for it, its protein content is down. So, doctor. Yes. Um, we talked about investing for starters like about five million then the rest can come along the way yeah. so i've invested maybe 10 million yeah. how much do i expect to get at the end of the day as i told you a total of by 15 mm. pound mm. automatically sit down well knowing that when you have fed you your fish you have chased away the intruders mm. and you have maintained the number you are clear with your 36 to 40 million. You're lying, doctor. I'm not lying. 36 million. Guys. Yes. 
on my land i have some water at the bottom end trust me don't be surprised the next time you see that at the duke's farm we also have some fish doctor was yes. an honor speaking to you today thank you so much for this amazing work that you're doing here in uh, in, in 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 tororo do you guys accept people to come to the farm to learn and if so what are the procedures yeah we invite many people to come and study we call for students for internship let them come and study they acquire knowledge because the uganda we are in is now a hands-on yeah, so somebody who has come here and is installed in in the knowledge of fish farming we will not disturb the father to start looking for the job yeah. that's why i have qualified i've qualified in a public care say i've qualified in, a, in a human resources buy for me a job of 15 million mm -hmm. no here it is direct another simple calculation which i was showing you is that when i've sold my fish at 12 12,000 per kilo eh? there that's when i'll get 36 million okay yeah wow thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to speak to you we shall definitely come back for a lot more information ladies and gentlemen don't forget to go and subscribe to zoe farms and fisheries youtube channel they have quite interesting content from me and the entire team we wish you all the very best don't forget to support me by subscribing and of course coming to sungura house and eat some rabbit meat until then goodbye I salute you